In today's video, I'm gonna take you behind the scenes of my hot sauce business. I'm gonna show you some of the devices I use to help me optimize the whole bottling process. This is the machine I've been using for a while now. I actually have, well, three of them. These two over here. And then I have another one that actually, instead of using a hopper, it has a pipe that can go down into a barrel and it pulls up. Uh, that one I've put away for the moment because I prefer this hopper. You can get all the sauce out of this very easily. With the pipe going into a bucket, there's always a little bit left in the bottom and yeah, I don't like wasting. But this here, it's a pneumatic filler and you get different sizes. This one here, I believe can do from 40 mil or 30 mil. Uh, milliliters up to 400 milliliters or maybe even 500 milliliters that's controlled with this here this is a piston that sits at the back controlled by air and i'll show you the compressor in just a second but over here there's a little sensor this piston will go back as far as the sensor and then it'll come through that there is pulling a plunger that's basically like a syringe and it pulls liquid down from here into this cavity pulls back on that, pulls the liquid in, and then it pumps back with the piston, pushes in, and comes out the end here. So you can control a few things. This here is to control how quickly this blocks up the hole again. If you do it too quickly, then it squirts stuff out the bottom, and then you make a mess, so you have to adjust that. Um, I've got that all dialed in. You can also adjust the speed at which it dispenses the liquid. So over here, if I loosen this up, it'll allow more air in and it'll allow this piston to go a bit quicker. This one at the back controls how quickly it starts the process again. So how quickly it pulls back. That one there is not too much of a problem. You can just leave that fully open. And I use this little pedal to get the uh, source to, well, Get the piston to fire off each time so there is electricity involved here as well of course and that controls all the sensors and all that sort of stuff this here is controlled with this over here it's a compressor and it looks like quite a big one it is but you do not want this thing recompressing too often this one i think does about 20 25 minutes before it needs to re uh what do you call it recompress the air i guess um, that's just how much air that that thing uses. But that there, yeah, about 20, 25 minutes, so that's not too bad. And I got this specific one upgraded because I had another one before uh, that was very loud. And in a small space like this, you do not want that. I was wearing earplugs and that's a pain. This one here is very quiet and very quick to recompress. So very pleased with that purchase. It definitely is a real benefit and also i can run two machines off this at the same time so i can have something else coming off there uh, obviously with the two pumps it makes things a little bit easier now i do have the second one over here which is pretty much the same as this one same 30 liter hopper same controls around here it's a little bit of a different design but the basic concept is exactly the same you can control how much liquid's coming in over there uh, you got the same settings over here these end bits are removable so you can replace them uh, i do have another one over here so if you have smaller bottles then you can use smaller tips and the reason i got this one because uh, i wouldn't have bought it otherwise is because i wanted to try a little bit of automation because it does have the ability to be automated uh, i can obviously use a foot pedal here as well but i also have this here which plugs into this machine and allows me to automate this somewhat and let me show you this working because i've got it dialed in at the moment so hopefully it doesn't make a big mess and i'll then explain how this works It works rather well for such an inexpensive little machine and yeah i'm pretty pleased with that whether or not it's going to optimize my process the way i think it will that's still to be seen because i haven't tried this with actually doing my sources it's a little slower 
filling a bottle than when I fill a bottle. So this takes about eight seconds, or the way I've set it up here, it takes about eight seconds for this to fill up one of these bottles. And that's just because if it goes any quicker than that, because I haven't got the bottle up underneath and inside there, then it actually sprays around. So I need to figure out how I can make it so it runs smoother. I think because this is water, obviously the viscosity of this is a little bit different than sauce. And um, that's going to play a factor. So I will try it out with sauce. But first, I just wanted to get it done with water because it's a little bit easier to clean up. Now, like I said, this takes about eight seconds to fill up these bottles. Normally, when I'm doing it, it takes about three seconds or so. But the main reason I actually wanted to try out something like this is because at the moment, it's optimal for me to do this with three people. And I don't always have three people around. So I wanted to have something I could do this on my own. So if I line the bottles up there, the bottles coming off here, I can have a bit of assembly line going on, I can cap them as soon as they're coming off the line and keeps them nice and safe and keeps everything nice and healthy. So we'll see how that goes. I will try it out with some sauce, uh, maybe this weekend, maybe next week, we'll see. Uh, how this thing works, it's pretty straightforward actually. Uh, like I said, the time that this takes to fill is about eight seconds. So you can set here, uh, that's set to eight and a half seconds. So that's what time it allows. So if I, I have disconnected the actual machine, but I can run this here, I can just put a empty bottle in and uh, let me get that back to normal and you'll see what happens. So starting the automation, that's running along. I can set the speed as well. So it's going quicker, but we'll slow it down a bit. So it doesn't wobble. It gets there, that timer there is gonna count down. It's gonna let this fill. It doesn't know that this is filling, it just triggers the filling process. And then once it gets to eight and a half seconds, it moves along. And then it waits half a second before it detects the next bottle, which again is just some calibration you need to do with the timing. Once the bottle comes off the end here, obviously the conveyor belt comes back under, but it'll just push up there. So if I had another bottle there, it's just gonna keep pushing it up on the shelf. And hopefully by that point, I would have taken it off anyway and put a cap on. So yeah, that's pretty straightforward. You do need to do a little bit of calibration. This little laser here, you need to get that as close to the bottle as you can. So if you have a look when that is there, it's pretty pretty much like a couple of mil, a couple of millimeters away from the bottle, which is where you want it. And it detects a bottle and then it triggers the filling. So that's that. I'm going to test this out properly this weekend, hopefully, maybe next week. Uh, we have another sauce to bottle. I am going to be bottling my garlic fire, which I know you guys have been waiting for for a while. Even if you don't make hot sauce uh, or you don't make it at the scale I do, I hope that you still enjoyed this video. I love watching shows like How It's Made. I'm not going to make half the stuff that I see on those shows, but it's still fun to see how things are done. And if you do want to see more content like this, let me know in the comments below and I'll see what I can do. Also, don't forget to join me on Sunday for my live stream. It's my monthly live stream at 5 p.m. BST. We'll be spending an hour together. Uh, you can ask me questions about this video or anything else really. And I look forward to seeing you there. Until then, stay spicy.